In section 3, we showed the relationship between moles and mass. You might recall, molar mass is equal to the mass, m, divided by the moles, n. Or rearranging this, we can say the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by molar mass. This is going to become important because we can use this in our PV equals in our T equation to solve for molar mass uh, and density. So if we substitute N is equal to M over M uh, molar mass into the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, we obtain PV is equal to mass over molar mass times RT. If we solve this equation for the molar mass, we obtain molar mass is equal to the mass times R times T divided by PV. Once again, T will have to be absolute temperature and R is the ideal gas constant. The procedure for determining the molar mass of a gas for measurements of mass, pressure, temperature, and volume is known as Dumas method. This is an equation you either you can derive when you need it or memorize. Let's look at an example. I have 9.25 gram sample of unknown gas occupying a volume of 5.75 liters at 25 degrees C and a pressure of 1.08 atmosphere. Calculate its molar mass. So we're talking about a gas, so we're going to use the ideal gas law with our little substitution of N is equal to mass over molar mass. So after we calculate the molar mass, they want us to guess which one of these gases we expect it to be closest to. Well, that's this case of just looking at the molar mass of these three species and seeing which number it's closest to. So we know molar mass is equal to mass times R times T over PV. We plug in our mass, which is given, which is 9.25 grams. We know our ideal gas constant, 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Our temperature, we know we have to change it to Kelvin, so we take our 25 degrees C and change it to 298 Kelvin. Our pressure is given to us at 1.08 atmosphere, and our volume is 5.75 liters. Watch our units cancel, and what's left is grams per mole, which is what we're looking for. If we multiply the numbers, we get 36.4 grams per mole. That's the molar mass. Now we want to decide, is this going to be N2, O2, or HCl? Well, that's just a case of now calculating your molar masses of those three species. Molar mass of nitrogen is 28.02, that's 14.01 twice. Oxygen is 16.00 twice, which is 32 grams per mole. And in HCl, 1.01 .01 and 35.45, add that up, you get 36.46 grams per mole. So which one of these three is the molar mass we calculated the closest to? Well, the most likely unknown gas in this scenario would be HCl. We can use the Dumas method, also known as the vapor density method, to calculate molar mass based on the density of a gas. If we look again at our derivation of the molar mass equation, PV is equal to M over molar mass RT, we can solve for molar mass and insert density for mass over volume, which is what density is. So we get molar mass is equal to mass times R times T divided by Vp. Okay, all we did was we brought our molar mass over here, our PV over here. Now if we plug in mass over volume, we plug in density for it, we have a new equation. Molar mass is equal to density times RT divided by P. We can use the above equation to solve for molar mass. However, if we are at STP, we can simplify things even further because, because we know that any gas at STP has a molar volume of 22.4 liters per mole, meaning your molar volume is equal to 22.4 liters per mole, which is equal to some volume over N, which is equal to RT over P. 
just rearranging your PV equals NRT equation. So that means then, if we are at STP, I can substitute that RTP in this equation with 22.4 liters per mole. Therefore, molar mass is equal to density times your molar volume at STP. This is a good important equation you can, can use sometimes, but you got to remember that it's conditions at STP, not all conditions, only at STP that the molar mass will equal to density times your molar volume. Let's look at an example. Calculate the density of ozone, molar mass at 48.0 times uh, 48.0 grams per mole at 50 degrees C and 1.75 atmospheres of pressure. Well, we know we got to change Celsius to Kelvin, and we can use the Dumas method equation and rearrange the solid density. However, a big important note here is that we are not at STP. Okay, I'm not at STP, so I cannot use the shortcut. I can't just take molar volume and multiply it time uh, and solve for density. Okay, I cannot use that one. I'm going to have to plug in the numbers. So you got molar mass is equal to density RT over P. Rearranging gives me density is equal to my pressure time molar mass divided by RT. So density is equal to 1.75 atmospheres, which is my pressure. My molar mass is 48.0 grams per mole. My R is my 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And my temperature, my 50 degrees C, has been changed to 323 Kelvin. Cancel my units. I'm left with grams per liter. Multiply my numbers, 3.17 grams per liter. is the density of ozone. Typical density units for a gas should be grams per liter. Homework 44.